The Witcher Blood Origin takes place 1,200 years before the events of the original Witcher. The Netflix series counts Michelle Yeoh among its cast. Choke them here. Fight us a clan, and we may just make it out. A new era of Witcher lore means a new cast of characters. I am um, an ancient elf, the keeper of all lore. So, a storyteller and a protector of storytellers. When all hope was lost, they led her ships to this continent. And now, they light our skies again. It's a sign, Ked. Maybe there's hope for me too. Merwin dreams and aspires to be I don't make you look presentable. someone who can push this continent into a new golden era for elf kind. And she wants to be someone with an opinion who can be heard and listened to. Gwen. Meldorf is a fierce, independent, witty dwarf with a killer warhammer called Gwen. And when we meet her in The Witch of Blood Origin, she's been on a quest all over the continent. And the Lark herself, no less. Thought you'd be shorter. Still, it's not your fault. Your exploits are becoming more famous than your songs. Ayla is an elite warrior, um, blessed with a voice from the gods, um, for her to share messages and stories through song. It's the rumble of all In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 2022 coming to a close this week, and we want to take a look back at the top weather events we saw this year. That's ahead in our next hour of GMSA. And we take a look at the roads around San Antonio, still looking pretty good. No accidents to speak of that we know of right now. Not that much traffic out there. People are taking a rest after a big Christmas day yesterday on a Monday. We'll be right back. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. Following that weekend winter storm that's left dozens dead and hampered holiday travel for thousands. The details ahead. You think nothing of when you turn on a light switch, but whenever you haven't had power for a few days and you turn on a light switch, it, it, it means it's just everything. Especially cold Christmas for many after several power substations on the West Coast were attacked by vandals. What police know about the attackers, that's just ahead. And the Texas Longhorns getting ready for game day. They got a date with the Washington Huskies right here in San Antonio this week at the Valero Alamo Bowl preview coming up. It says 31 degrees, but it's, it's 30 degrees according to Sarah Spivey. At 6 this morning, another freezing start to the day, the day after Christmas, but Hey, she says things are going to warm up later in the week. She'll have our forecast in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Monday, December 26th, the day after. The day after. It's, that's the, that's, this is like the tough day because you're still in holiday mode. It's official. The official federal holiday for Christmas is today. Today's a great day because it's leftover day, too. Ooh, that's right. Oh yeah, I have some leftover leftovers day. when I go home. I got a leftover key lime pie that I Do made. You? I got a leftover pasta that I made. There you go. I've got a lot of leftovers. See, Sarah Spivey did all the today. cooking for her family. Kudos to you. Thank you. My aunt did make some delicious gumbo yesterday that oh, we were able to okay. celebrate with, and it was, it was so good. And you know, sometimes the leftovers are better than they the are. original. They are. All the flavors so. meld yeah. all together. All right. <laughs> All right, taking a look outside right now, we have got freezing temperatures around San Antonio. It's 30 degrees and dew points are low. It's very dry outside, chapstick weather, extra lotion on the hands weather. It's very dry outside. And as we take a look at temperatures around the metro area, it's still below freezing in New Braunfels where it's 31 degrees, 26 in Bulverde, 24 in Rio Medina, 24 in Bandera, 22 in Hondo, and 24 in Yavaldi. Uh, well, uh, today calls for total sunshine. We're going to be looking once again at temperatures rising pretty steadily. By noon, we'll be in the 50s, and in the afternoon, 62 for the high temperature. West-northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
summer. Uh, your traffic authority today, things look pretty nice on the roads. We're not seeing that many issues out there right now. Early this morning, we didn't really anticipate that many issues but being so soon after Christmas, but you can see there are still people on the roads. That's 410 at Perrin Vital. Again, flowing uh, smoothly out there, but uh, temperatures are still going to be well below freezing, so just bundle up if you're planning on heading out uh, over the next uh, hour or so. As we take a look at gas prices, if you can find anything in San Antonio that's less than $2.50, go for it. That's the average right now across the city. Texas average, $2.64 and the national average if you're heading out around uh, the nation, $3.10. So if you can find anything cheaper than that, you're good to go. I'll be back with a look at the weather across the state of Texas if you have uh, family or loved ones planning on hitting the road. And we'll talk about how we'll be in the 70s by the middle of this week. David. Thank you, Sarah. Terrifying moments for a couple sleeping in their trailer. They woke up to the smell of smoke. Crews say flames broke out around 1130 last night on Goldfield Drive. That's on the northeast side near Loop 410 in Ritterman. Firefighters tell us that they were able to get the flames knocked out pretty quick without anyone getting hurt. Crews say flames spread from the couple's fireplace. And firefighters also had their hands full with a blaze of a loft on the northwest side. This one broke out around 10 last night on Hillcrest Drive, not far from Fredericksburg and Babcock. Crews say the building was evacuated after flames were sparked in a first floor kitchen. While no one was hurt, two people are without a place to stay for the time being. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify a man who was killed in a crash involving a suspected drunk driver. And it happened just after midnight yesterday on WW White Road and East South Cross. That's where police say the driver of an SUV ran a red light and smashed into another car. The driver of the car was taken to the hospital. The 78 year old passenger died at the scene. Police arrested the driver of the SUV who was booked for intoxicated manslaughter. New concerns this morning about the security of the nation's electrical grid after more power substations were vandalized, knocking out power on Christmas Day. Many customers expected to be in the dark. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, new attacks highlighting the vulnerability of the U.S. power grid. On Sunday, Christmas Day, three power stations in Washington state were broken into, two of them vandalized. As a result, Tacoma Public Utilities and Puget Sound Energy reported 14,000 customers were left in the dark. Officials posting a message urging customers to report outages. You think nothing of when you turn on a light switch, but whenever you haven't had power for a few days and you turn on a light switch, it's, it, it means it's just everything. The attacks come after at least five power substations were reportedly attacked in Washington and Oregon last month and two more in North Carolina earlier this month. The targeted shootings at power substations left entire towns in Moore County without power for days. And we have confirmed that this was malicious intent. This was no accident. The local sheriff saying Duke Energy crews saw someone shooting from a vehicle near a power plant, then speeding off. Shell casings at the two sites recovered. Search warrants issued in the case, but it wasn't clear if they were for a person or people in the area. Every investigator working on this case, state, local, and federal, know what you want, and that's answers. Many substations are vulnerable because they're in remote areas and are mostly unattended. As for the Washington state attacks on Christmas Day, a statement from the Pierce County Sheriff says deputies are conducting the initial investigation. We do not have any suspects in custody. It is unknown if there are any motives or if this was a coordinated attack on the power systems. One former regulator said he can't recall another month with as many physical threats made to the U.S. electric grid. And a recent Homeland Security bulletin warned that domestic extremists have been developing plans to disrupt the grid since at least 2020. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, one group that will benefit from the $1.7 trillion spending bill that passed Friday are retirees. A savings me measure in the bill is designed to ensure greater retirement plan participation by making it easier to opt into or out of plans. Samsung Electronics is betting on chips. The company plans to increase chip production capacity at its larger semiconductor plant in South Korea by next year. The move comes as a recent chip shortage turned into a chip glut 
as economies worldwide slow down, but it could allow Samsung to grab a bigger market share in the long run. A reported spike in COVID cases across China could impact Apple's bottom line. China is home to the world's largest iPhone factory, and the company may be facing supply chain issues after the country's zero COVID policy ended and more Chinese hospitals are overwhelmed. A quick fix may be coming soon for an issue with the iPhone Pro 14 Max. Users have been complaining about flashing horizontal lines on the display, periodically occurring when they wake up their phone. Apple reportedly says it's software issue, and it's now planning to release an update. 608, 31 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we're taking a look at the deadly aftermath of the brutal winter weather hitting parts of the United States over the weekend. Fortunately here, we didn't have any extreme uh, cases of weather here, just very, very cold. 31 degrees at 608 this morning. But Sarah Spivey says in just a couple of days, we're gonna, it's gonna warm up here in South Texas. She'll have our full forecast for us when we come back. Welcome back. It is 12 minutes after 6 o'clock. The 2022 holiday season becoming a nightmare for millions still dealing with that winter storm. Thousands of flight cancellations and delays have many people wondering how they are going to get to their final destination as some areas of the U.S. brace yet again for freezing temps. ABC's Justin Finch has more for us. Good morning. Massive snowstorms and chilling cold around the country have left dozens dead, and officials say the death toll will rise. A tragic holiday weekend for dozens of families now planning funerals after winter storms nationwide left at least 39 people dead. There is substantial, significant, and devastating loss of life as a result of this winter storm. Authorities report multiple people found dead in or near their cars. We know there are people who've been stuck in cars for more than two days. The storm also dropping nearly four feet of snow. Buffalo's airport is closed until tomorrow. Thousands of passengers left stranded nationwide. More than 2,800 flights canceled yesterday alone, and nearly 6,700 were delayed. In Rockton, Illinois, several injured in this eight-vehicle crash. Tread road conditions. In Ohio, a deadly multi-car pileup involving roughly 50 cars. And power outages left hundreds of thousands in the dark over the weekend. And Con Edison, the power supplier to New York City, thanked customers Sunday for reducing their energy consumption, saying the system has now stabilized. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Fortunately, nothing like that here in South Texas, which means the roads should be pretty clear, at least weather-wise. Yeah, traveling today, uh, Sarah Spivey says you're going to be okay. I know a lot of people are going to be heading back home or back to their destination. We haven't seen any crashes this morning, um, knock on wood. But if anything happens, we will let you guys know about it. Absolutely. And speaking about travel across the state of Texas, I've got a look at here at the next three days. Maybe you have loved ones or you yourself are traveling over Texas the next couple of days. Today's going to be a great day across Texas. High temperatures in the 50s and 60s, plenty of sunshine. And tomorrow we'll start off below freezing across most of the state, but once again warming up into the 50s and 60s. And then on Wednesday, things are great too. Pretty clear outside uh, with temperatures warming up into near 70 degrees across south central Texas. Texas and in the 60s elsewhere. So there's not going to be any major travel problems as far as the weather is concerned around the state of Texas. Outside right now, boy, is it cold. It's 30 degrees outside. We have been seeing pretty cold weather since last Thursday when that Arctic cold front moved through. But in spite of the cold start, we're going to be having our warmest day since that front moved through on Thursday. Here's a look at temperatures in your neighborhood. It's 23 in Kerrville. Good morning in Hondo, where it's 22 degrees, 31 in New Braunfels, 30 in Catula, below freezing in Del Rio at 31 degrees as well. And then in Castroville, 27, 27 the wake-up temperature in Bulverde, just above freezing in Lotus, Bernie, and in Converse this morning. In your KSAT 12-hour forecast, already above freezing in San Antonio by 9 o'clock. And then around noon, we'll be in the mid 50s. Winds will be from the west today at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. 62 for the high temperature. 
right near the average, which is 63 this time of year. It's going to feel great this afternoon outside, especially after days of cold weather. 64 in Uvalde, 60 in Pleasanton, 59 in Gonzales Inn in Austin, 59 in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, and 62 in Eagle Pass. All right, our weather set up across the nation. You know, there is a cold front that's moving through the Red River right now. There's even some very light snow across the Red River, but many of the travel delays today will come from the system that's currently pushing through the Mississippi River Valley, bringing some lake effect snow to parts of the Great Lakes states as well today. Uh, but here in San Antonio, that front is just going to send in a reinforcing shot of drier air, which means that overnight we're still probably going to be seeing a widespread freeze, forecasting a morning low tomorrow right around 30 degrees in San Antonio. This is not going to be a very deep hard freeze. You're not going to have to worry about uh, the pipes tonight, but still keep those plants covered tonight and make sure your pets have a nice place to stay indoors. Otherwise, temperatures will be in the upper 20s in the hill country and right near freezing around San Antonio early tomorrow morning. We'll be looking at a high temperature near 60 degrees for your Tuesday, close to freezing Wednesday morning and high temperature near 70 will be in the 70s on Thursday and Friday with only a small chance for isolated rain. We'll talk more about those rain chances coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. But for now, it looks like uh, the weekend is going to be great for the end of the year into 2023. Uh, we'll have morning lows this weekend in the 50s and afternoons in the 70s. I welcome those 74s after we've had in the teens, 20s. I know. It, it's just been I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all, all, all up and down as far as temperatures go. The South Texas girl is thawing out. <laughs> okay, it's 617, six, 31 degrees. So did you catch the Cowboys and Texans Christmas Eve? Oh, yeah, lots of shouting in my household. Good shouting, Ooh. though. Both squads had a rivalry match, and they both went their way. We'll have the highlights, and we'll get you ready for next week's games coming up. Trying to control my asthma felt anything but normal. <laughs> enough was enough. I talked to an asthma specialist and found out my severe asthma is driven by eosinophils, a type of asthma Nucala can help control. Now, fewer asthma attacks and less oral steroids. That's my new normal with Nucala. Nucala is a once monthly add on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma. Nucala is not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Talk to your asthma specialist to see if once monthly Nucala may be right for you. And learn about savings at Nucala.com. There's more to your life than asthma. Find your new normal with Nucala. In this morning's GMA First Look, we've got all the answers if you're considering returning a gift this year. The National Retail Federation reporting that returns nearly doubled during the pandemic. $218 billion worth of online purchases were sent back. And the return rate is estimated to stay in that elevated range for 2022. And now retailers are responding. So we're seeing this year that return policies have gotten a little bit less generous than we've seen in years past. Policies like shortening the return window, charging restocking fees, or telling shoppers they'll have to pay for shipping. So when you're thinking about returning something, it's really important to keep your timeline in mind. Try to get it done within January, if, if possible. And coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know to avoid all those headaches with your holiday gift returns. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Welcome back. 22 minutes after 6 o'clock, it is 622. The Valero Alamo Bowl coming up this Thursday night. So the Texas Longhorns held their first workout here in San Antonio yesterday. This is what it looked like at Trinity University, where the Horns took the field to prepare for the Washington Huskies in the Dome. The Longhorns ranked 20th in the country. The Huskies ranked 12th. And for some members of the Longhorn team, this is their second trip to San Antonio. If you remember, the Horns were here for the Valero Alamo Bowl back in 2020. They dominated Colorado that night, 55-23. Having the ability you know, to get an opportunity on a stage like this, I think that's huge. Um, 
you know, I was able to play, you know, in Alabo myself, uh, my freshman year. So I think um, when you get a chance to step up like these guys have and, you know, they've been putting in their work, um, you know, I'm just really excited to see what they can do out there. All right, the Huskies arrived in San Antonio around 8.30 last night. They'll start their preparations for only their second trip to the Alamo City. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys and Texans both had a divisional matchup go their way on Christmas Eve. Dallas welcomed the Philadelphia Eagles to town with, without their starting quarterback, though it is still ended up being a close, high-scoring matchup. But in the end, it was the Dallas defense that stepped up big in the final moments of the game, keeping Philly from getting the go-ahead score. The final from Jerry World, 40-34. Cowboys have a short week, though. They head to Nashville this Thursday to take on the Tennessee Titans. Kickoff set for 7:15 Thursday night. Speaking of the Titans, they've been on a losing skid as of late, and that trend continued against the Texans. Tennessee, without their starting quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, their rookie backup, Malik Willis, looked very much like a rookie backup. Struggled to get any rhythm going for much of the game. Houston, with the help of both quarterbacks, Davis Mills and Jeff Driscoll, Texans stunned the favored Titans. Fodder from Nissan Stadium was 19 to 14. Next up for the Texans, another divisional game this time against the Red Hot Jacksonville Jaguars. Kickoff is set for Sunday at noon, and the Texans surprising everybody 21 in the division, which is right there in the hunt. The San Antonio Spurs try to get back in the win column tonight after losing the Orlando Magic last Friday. Tonight, the team takes on the Utah Jazz. Seven o'clock at the AT&T Center tomorrow. They're on the road, so actually they'll be departing right after their game tonight, heading to Oklahoma to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then Thursday, they're back home to take on the Knicks. So they got a wild week before the end of the year. Thank you, David. Go Spurs, go. Mm -hmm. 624, 31 degrees. It was a scary night for people on two different parts of town after flames broke out in the middle of the night. Ahead in our next hour, we're going to take a look at the damage. Let's take a look outside with the roads. Uh, more people on the roads as we creep on to 630 in the morning. Um, a lot of people probably traveling today, tomorrow, heading back home for the uh, after the Christmas holiday. If any crashes or backups occur, we'll let you know about them. We'll be right back. At this hour, fire crews keeping busy overnight with a pair of fires, one on the northeast side, the other on the northwest side of town. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And an active silver alert you may see if you are headed out on the roads this morning. The search is on for a man last seen in the Kingsville area. Everything police know about his disappearance is coming up. It's I'm sorry, you know, the wounds. Mm -hmm. And and then the three hearts is, this is the actual shooting. The community of Uvalde is still remembering the lives lost this year at Robb Elementary. Just ahead, how a San Antonio Archbishop hopes a new project will help with the healing. And outside with live cam, a little chilly now, but it's gonna be an absolutely gorgeous day. If you got outside toys or out, maybe you got a cooker. Maybe you want to try that out today. But whatever you want to do outside today, you can get out there and enjoy a beautiful Monday. Kids toys, yeah. adult toys. Good morning. It's Monday, 20, December 26th. It's the day after Christmas. And it's going to be a beautiful day, you know, once things start warming up. Yeah. Maybe you, maybe you got a hammock. Go out and take a nap. Oh, there you go. After a big day yesterday. That's that a good one. Nice, it's huh? still too cold outside for me to take oh, a nap. Well, oh, just put on, a, put on that Christmas sweater. There you go. It is chilly out there this morning. Well below freezing all across San Antonio and South Central Texas. Today, temperatures are starting off in the 20s. It was 20, it's 28 degrees in Bulverde, 28 at Port S.A., 24 at Rio Medina, 31 in New Braunfels. In San Antonio, we got down to about 27 degrees this morning. So a widespread hard freeze around San Antonio today. But notice how quickly we're going to be warming up. Even by 10, we'll be well above freezing. It'll still be chilly this morning. 54 
54 degrees at noon, 62 this afternoon for the high temperature. The warmest we've been since Thursday when that Arctic front moved through west northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Obviously, again, today sunny getting into the 60s. I'll show you neighborhood high temperatures for the day today. Tomorrow, though, another light freeze is possible in the morning. But once again, we're going to have sunny, beautiful weather, and we're just getting started with the warming trend because this week by Thursday, we're going to be in the 70s. We're also going to talk about a chance for some isolated rain, but right now outside those roads are, are dry. Your traffic authority showing things looking all right out there. This is 281 at San Pedro, 90 at Couples. You know, people will be out on the roads heading home uh, from Christmas, but we do not anticipate any issues. Right now, no crashes reported around San Antonio at the moment, and we'll of course keep you updated. If you're planning on traveling up to Dallas, drive time about four hours. Average speed on 35 there is 66. If you're planning on heading east to Houston, about two hours and 45 minutes, 71 mile per hour average speed right now on I-10. And then heading south toward Corpus Christi on 37, about two hour drive, average speed about 70 miles per hour. And 35 south toward Laredo, things look good too. Average speed about 70 miles per hour with drive time clocking in around two hours and six minutes. We'll keep you posted on the conditions on the road. And of course, I've got to look ahead to our small chance for rain this week and what you can expect for New Year's Eve weekend around the corner. David, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Christmas celebrations put on hold last night after fires broke out on different parts of town overnight. One of those fires happened on the northwest side, and that's where we find our Camelia Juarez. She's got the details on that damage out there. Camelia? Well, Sarah, David, so far we know that no one was hurt in either fire, so that's good news. But around 10 o'clock last night, Leon Valley Fire and Balcones Heights Fire responded to a fire that was at this apartment complex, Balcones Lofts. Like I said, it happened around 10 o'clock last night, so let's take a look at some of the video from last night. Castle Hills and Leon Valley Fire say two people were home at the time. The fire started in the kitchen. Fire investigators are working to learn exactly what caused it, but fire crews were able to put it out quickly. Uh, two people, the two people living at the apartment were unable to return to their home, and it's unclear if those people have family to stay with or if they're being assisted by Red Cross. Again, investigators are working to find out what exactly caused that fire. And over on the city's northeast side, around 1130 last night, San Antonio Fire says a couple woke up to the smell of fire. When they got out of their trailer home, there was a fire and they called for help. San Antonio Fire says that that fire started in their fireplace. Again, no one was hurt in either of those fires. Reporting live on the northwest side, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. We, we begin with an active silver alert this morning for a man last seen in the Kingsville area. That's just southwest of Corpus Christi. Right now, police are looking for 90 year old Ralph Sparks, who was last seen on Friday. He's about five foot six. He has blue eyes and police say he may have some scratches on his hand. He was last seen in a blue 2020 Ford Fusion. That license plate on your screen right now, it's a Texas plate that reads NLT 3578. If you know anything that can help police find this man, you're asked to call Kingsville Police. That number also on the bottom of your, part of your screen there, 361-592-4311. The search is ended for a Texas A&M student who disappeared earlier this month. Police tell us the body of 22 year old Tanner Huang was found in Austin on Saturday near his abandoned car. He was reported missing on December 16th after his family says he didn't show up to lunch at College Station. His family members telling police his phone was turned off on the day he vanished. At this time, it's not clear why he was in the Austin area and his cause of death has not been released. In San Marcos, a former police officer is dead, shot and killed by members from the same police department he was employed with just three months ago. So this is a previous photo of 36-year-old Kyle Lobo. Just after midnight yesterday, San Marcos police officers responded to a scene where a 911 caller said that Lobo assaulted someone at an apartment complex. At some point, police say Lobo was accused of pointing the gun at officers who then shot him. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. KSAT Investigates has covered stories on Lobo. He voluntarily resigned from the San Marcos Police Department after he was arrested for assault of his wife back in October. 
Some other top stories this morning. The Taliban is warning U.S. officials against interfering in what they're calling Afghanistan's internal issues. The message came from a Taliban spokesperson saying no one will be allowed to speak out under the title of humanitarian aid. It comes after the Taliban ordered all local and international non-governmental organizations to stop female employees from going to work. It's also following a tweet from a U.S. diplomatic official questioning how the Taliban administration intends to prevent the starvation of women and children. Two busloads of migrants were dropped off near Vice President Harris's residence in Washington, D.C. this past weekend. No one was there to greet the asylum seekers as they arrived outside the U.S. Naval Observatory from Texas. An administration official says the migrants were then taken to local shelters. More asylum seekers could arrive in D.C. soon. Governor Greg Abbott continues to say this move continues to be a way of helping the migrants find more suitable accommodations since small Texas towns have quickly become overwhelmed with the amount of people coming in from across the border. The Supreme Court still deciding on the future of Title 42. Their ruling could keep emergency powers in place. That would allow border officials to turn away migrants on the grounds of preventing the spread of covid it follows months of legal battles brought on by Republican-led states hoping to keep restrictions in place after the White House ended them in the spring. Well, it's been a tough year for so many in and around our area, and the community of Uvalde continues to grieve the 19 students and two teachers who were killed this past May at Robb Elementary. This holiday season, all of this tragedy inspired Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra to deliver something special to that community. And as Stephanie Jimenez reports, he's doing it with help from a local artist. It's absorbing all the wounds. Mm -hmm. and, and then the three hearts is, this is the actual shooting. It's not an easy topic, but it's reality. Many people are in pain. With all the shootings and deaths our community has suffered this year, Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sier says we need hope, and he thinks this glass sculpture could help. But now is transformation, is change, is um, a process has taken place. The Archbishop just explained the symbolism behind this sculpture. But before we get into those details, Meet Ginny Garcia. She created the piece. She's been an artist in San Antonio for 25 years. I'm a storyteller. And so if you were to come to me to get a chandelier done, I would talk to you about your family. And I would ask you about everything. And so uh, it would be a representation of something that would be very heartfelt. So after the tragedy in Uvalde happened, Ginny's phone rang. It was the Archbishop. He was looking for a preaching tool, something that he could uh, easily take out, put on a desk or put in front of a church and speak to the certain points related to suffering and to love and to how to a healing tool. We've got hearts of stone and hearts that are just not able to heal, not even there's just so much anger going on. So how do we turn uh, suffering into love? That question and many others eventually led Jeannie to complete this sculpture, which Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sied plans to take whenever he meets with people impacted by gun violence. He wants them to know that he sees their pain, they're loved, and there's hope for healing. Dialogue brings so much richness when it really is a listening moment. And we can listen not only with our ears, sometimes we listen with our eyes. Some, sometimes we listen with our silence, sometimes with words, or sometimes with some actions. You know, but that is always we were made for communication, for building, building something more than our, ourselves as individuals. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. And looking ahead, we invite you to go behind the lens and meet some of our KSAT photojournalists. KSAT airing a one-hour special on Thursday, December 29th at 9 o'clock, presented by our talented staff. They're going to tell what stories they remember the most in 2022, and they'll take you behind the scenes on what goes into covering those stories. You'll see it here on KSAT on 9 on Thursday. And go ahead. And we lost a number of influential people in 2022 right now on our website. We're taking a look back at the legacies they leave behind. Just look for this story on KSAT.com. It's 32 degrees at 640.
And still ahead on GMSA, as this year comes to a close, we're taking a look at the top weather events we saw in 2022. Welcome back. It is 643 outside. Looking at the roads, that's I-37 at Jones and I-37 at Hackberry. We keep going around the horn and you're not going to find much in the way of traffic, which is really good. It's, so it, it's good. good. You can see the sunrise there off in the yep. distance, too. And you know what, guys? This is the coldest part of the day. We got down into the 20s, but this afternoon we're going to be coasting in the 60s. It's going to be nice and comfortable this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. So you're going to need your sunglasses today. You will definitely and need And a lighter jacket today. A lighter jacket in the nice. afternoon. A nice sweater, maybe. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. All, all in all around Texas, it's going to be perfectly fine. But there are a couple of travel spots uh, up in parts of the Midwest and down the Mississippi. Mississippi River Valley all the way to Arkansas and Oklahoma. Uh, and you know, you can see though that there's only some light precipitation across the Red River at the moment. As we take a look at winter travel impacts today, mainly across the uh, Great Lakes in the Midwest, that's where we're going to have some issues. And then across the Pacific Northwest and into the Rockies tomorrow, as another system makes its way into the United States, that's going to be a similar case on Wednesday as well. Uh, but generally, all in all, all a around Texas, things are going to be quiet for us. We are dealing with a widespread freeze this morning. It's 22 in Kerrville, 22 in Hondo, 26 in Pleasanton, 29 in Gonzales, 31 in Del Rio, and 22 in Kerrville. As we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, know that will be warming quickly, even by nine o'clock will be above freezing here in San Antonio around noon 54 degrees and in the afternoon 62 for the high that is very pleasant the warmest we've been since that Arctic cold front moved through on Thursday of this last week in your neighborhood out in Del Rio it'll be 64 60 in Pleasanton 64 in Catula 59 in Gonzales 62 in Canyon Lake and 59 in Kerrville around San Antonio Castroville you'll be at 64 62 Stinson area 62 in Seguin and 62 in Canyon Lake. Very dry today. Dew points are still in the teens and 20s. That's at the low end of our scale. You're going to need that chapstick. You're going to need that extra lotion. And we'll be seeing dew points really kind of drive our weather over the next couple of days. What do I mean by that? Well, dew points are going to be rising so that by tomorrow, dew points will be in the 30s, still pretty dry. By Wednesday, dew points will be back in the 50s and near 60 degrees by Thursday. Here's a weather fact for you. The temperature can never be below the dew point. So as the dew points rise, so will the temperature and you'll especially feel that in the morning. So even though I do anticipate another freeze tomorrow morning, by Thursday, our morning lows are going to be in the 50s and our afternoons are going to be in the 70s. We were talking earlier about the drought across the state of Texas and really a bullseye right around San Antonio for exceptional drought. Now we do have a potential for some rain throughout this week, mainly on Thursday and Friday, but the rain chances themselves and coverage is not going to be great. Let me take you through that and show you. By Thursday, we'll have about a 20% chance for isolated rain. And by the way, the high temperature on Thursday will be 70 degrees. Friday, about 30% coverage is possible with a high temperature in the upper 70s. So even though we have a shot at rain, we don't anticipate coverage to be all that much. And unfortunately, we don't anticipate all that much rain as well. And that means that while the New Year's Eve weekend will be good as far as the weather goes, uh, temperatures will be uh, warming up into the mid 70s. We do not anticipate there to be any issues. Now, here's the thing. It's that time of year again. We're taking a look back at the top five weather events across uh, San Antonio and Texas of 2022. Now, this year didn't give us too much to work with. It was a pretty dry year other than lots of heat and a few other surprising events. Meteorologist Justin Horn has the latest on what tops the list. Yes, 2022 wasn't all heat and drought. There were a few memorable events, and that brings us to number five, a West Texas earthquake. It may have been 350 miles away, but we felt it in San Antonio, centered near the small West Texas town of Mintone. The 5.4 magnitude earthquake was the third strongest in Texas history. Those in high-rise buildings in San Antonio reported feeling the quake. 
Number four, Hurricane Ian. Texas mostly avoided tropical weather, but Florida did not. Ian was one of the strongest hurricanes to ever make landfall on the U.S. mainland. Its effects were far reaching. Our own Adam Kasky traveled to Florida to help repair his in-laws house and reported on the destruction. We haven't touched anything. It's just everything's moved, you know. There's someone else, man. Hurricane moved it all. Oh, the smell in here. Oh, oh. At number three, now we talk extreme heat. South Texas is no stranger to the word hot, but 2022 was next level with temperatures, especially in the months of May, June, July, and August. We came up just one day shy of setting the record for the most 100 degree days in a year after hitting 107 on July 11th and spending a record amount of consecutive hours above 80 in July. Now for number two. March tornado outbreak. This is one of the bigger outbreaks of tornadoes in Central Texas history. On the afternoon of March 21st, numerous tornadoes touched down from just east of San Antonio to north along I-35 and around the Austin area. We were in storm chaser that day following an EF2 tornado that would do quite a bit of damage near Kingsbury. Finally, our top spot goes to, and you guessed it, drought. It was a year for the record books when it comes to lack of rainfall. It was hard to come by all year long with stretches for weeks during the summer without a drop of rain. And when we did get it, it wasn't much. Exceptional drought has settled in around the area and it appears we'll be challenging 1917 for the driest year on record. We'll continue to hope and pray for rain. I'm meteorologist Justin Horn and that's the top five weather events of 2022. I think will be the second driest year on record. Oh here wow! In San Antonio, yeah. it, Medina Lake is like, isn't it below? Way below. Ten, ten percent. It's like, like seven percent full right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh. Very dry. I hope this yeah. next year brings us some good rain. I hope it brings us some good rain too. A safe amount. Yep. Of good rain. And that drought bullseye right over Colmel County. I know. Right over Colmel, Kendall County. That whole Amazing. area. Amazing. So yeah. be careful with popping fireworks. Maybe just don't do it if you're out don't, in those. Don't do it. Incorporated areas. You know, just you know, watch TV. Yeah. Cheers, uh, some nice champagne or something. Yeah, stay inside. <laughs> All right, it's 650 and 31 de degrees. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA, getting financial control is a popular New Year's resolution, but studies show the vast majority of Americans are likely to drop their goals within the first month. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll show you the best way to plan ahead so you can make the best money moves. Chilly right now at 31 degrees. You can see that beautiful sunrise coming up. It's going to be a beautiful day, according to Sarah Spivey. So if you still have in-laws in town like me, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy what San Antonio has to offer and enjoy the weather outside and not be too cold. Before you go, terrifying moments for a couple sleeping in their trailer after they awakened to the smell of smoke. Crews say flames broke out around 1130 last night on Goldfield Drive. That's in the city's northeast side near Loop 410 outside the Loop and Ritterman. Firefighters tell us they were able to get the fl flames knocked out quickly without anyone getting hurt. Crews say those flames spread from the couple's fireplace. An active silver alert this morning for a man last seen in the Kingsville area just southwest of Corpus Christi. Right now, police are looking for 90-year-old Ralph Sparks, who was last seen on Friday. He is about five foot six, blue eyes. Police say he may have some scratches on his hand. He was last seen in a blue 2020 Ford Fusion with Texas license plate NLT3578. If you know anything that can help police find this man, you're asked to call Kingsville Police. That number is there on your screen right now, 361-592-4311. A lot of people traveling today. Good news is Sarah Spivey says Texas roads pretty safe out there and we haven't seen any crashes in our area this morning. Very good news and you know what sun's up. So even though it's cold right now feels like 25 with those winds from the west at five miles per hour. We are going to warm up quickly cold though in Bulverde at 29 24 in Rio Medina 27 in Castroville. Look at those temperatures today. 54 by noon, 62 for the afternoon high temperature. Warmest we've been since Thursday. We'll have another freeze tomorrow morning, but then temperatures will steadily warm into the 70s by Thursday and Friday when we have a small chance for rain. Thank you, Sarah. It's been a pleasure, Sarah. David? Absolutely. We'll be back here at 9 a.m. GMA is next. Have a great day.